Hello, welcome to everyone in this lecture. That is the terms and concepts in enzymology. Friends, what do you mean about enzymology? Or what are enzymes? So no doubt, enzymology is the science which deals with the study of enzymes. Then a question arises in your mind: What are enzymes? So I will explain you. Enzymes are the biological catalyst which enhance the rate of reaction. without undergoing any change in themselves as well as their equilibrium so enzymes are biocatalyst what are catalysts catalysts are the substances which increase the rate of reaction this catalyst may be metals this catalyst may be proteins this catalyst may be nucleic acid or they may have other natures but all catalysts have a property to increase the rate of reaction so enzymes are biocatalysts means that they are obtained from biological entity they are obtained from organism so now you have clear that enzymes are obtained from biological entities the spontaneous reactions that means the natural reactions without any catalysts are very slow and in our body or in body of any organism the reactions must be takes place very rapidly so these biocatalysts or these enzymes increase the rate of reaction enhance the rate of reaction these enzymes does not undergo any change in their structure it does not mean that their structure is not altered at all they alter their structure during the reactions but after completion of the reaction the initial structure and the final structure will be the same that means in the reaction they are not reactants they involve only to enhance the reaction they involve only to increase the rate of reaction so enzymes are basically proteins they are in, they are folded in tertiary or quaternary structure you have already learned what is tertiary and quaternary structure of protein these are nothing but super foldings of amino acid sequence superfolding of a protein or a structural hierarchy in which protein is superfolded so if a enzyme is made up of single polypeptide then that enzyme is called as oligomeric enzyme and if the enzyme is made up of many polypeptides or many subunits they are called as multimeric or oligomeric enzyme so enzymes are the biological catalyst which enhance the rate of reaction without undergoing any change in themselves and their equilibrium we will see what is equilibrium later now we will see other terms which are related with this enzymes the second and most important term is substrate substrates are the chemical compounds or reactants which actually involve in the reaction so the change which is taking place in the reaction is in the substrate is in the reactant and not in the enzyme so this substrate binds to the enzyme substrate does not bind to the enzymes randomly but there are some sites on the enzymes which are made for binding of substrate only at that site or only to that particular amino acids this substrate can bind that particular site on the enzyme it's called as active site so the binding of substrate with the enzyme is called as enzyme substrate complex this enzyme substrate complex is formed at the active site and ultimately the substrate will convert into product then the substrate converts into the product the structure of enzyme will remain same as earlier so the active site on the enzyme has some specific amino acid sequences this specific amino acid sequences helps to bind helps to enzyme to bind with the substrate if you see the whole structure of enzyme a very small region of the enzyme is acting as a active site so the active site on the enzyme provides micro environment 
for the enzymatic reaction. The active site is actual binding site. The active site have two components that are binding site and catalytic site. The amino acids which are present in the catalytic sites are actually responsible to carry out the enzymatic reaction. And the amino acids which are present in the binding sites are responsible for holding the substrate in the vicinity of catalytic site. So the amino acids which are present at the binding sites are responsible for holding the substrate in the vicinity of catalytic site. So this catalytic site and binding site constitutively makes active site. Now no doubt most of the enzymes are protein in nature but enzymes needs some other accessory materials to carry out the reaction. If these substances are absent, then that enzyme may not carry out the reaction. Oil enzyme does not require these substances, but most of the enzymes are depends on these substances which are non-proteinous in nature. That means enzyme is made up of protein and, and these substances are non-proteinous. So these substances which are non proteinaceous are called as cofactor or coenzyme. So, when to use term cofactor and when to use term coenzyme? If these substances are metallic in nature, then they are called as cofactor. And if these substances are organic compounds or organometallic compounds, then at that time, they are called as coenzymes. So if sodium, calcium, potassium, magnesium, these metals helps the enzyme to carry out the reaction, then these metals are called as cofactor in that enzymatic reaction. Whereas if they are organic compounds like NAD, FAD, thiamine pyrophosphate, biotin or any other organic compound, at that time these compounds are called as coenzyme of that particular enzymatic reaction. So, the protein part of such enzyme is called as apoenzyme. And apoenzyme with coenzyme or cofactor is called as holoenzyme. Most of the times, if the enzyme is attached with a particular metal, then such enzymes are called as metalloenzymes or metal activated enzymes. Many times these non proteinous compounds bound to the enzyme so tightly that it is very difficult to remove these compounds by any simple mechanical process. Means that these compounds are covalently or tightly bound to the enzymes. At that time they are called as prosthetic group. So if a cofactor or a coenzyme covalently binds to the or tightly bound to the enzyme or apoenzyme in the holoenzyme then that cofactor or coenzyme is called as prosthetic group. Most of the enzymes perform their functions in the presence of cofactor or coenzymes. But there are some enzymes which are synthesized in our body completely in the inactive form and they become active in some circumstances or in some conditions or in the presence of some extrinsic environmental factors, external factors. So such inactive enzymes are called as zymogen or proenzymes. So most of the proteolytic enzymes are synthesized in our body in the form of zymogen. For example, pepsin is synthesized in the form of pepsinogen, trypsin in the form of trypsinogen and carboxypeptidase in the form of procarboxypeptidase A or B. So these enzymes have a particular region which restricts this enzyme from performing a particular reaction. But some extrinsic factor are responsible for removing that particular region and the enzyme will become active. For example, in the presence of proteins, the pepsinogen protein, the inactive pepsinogen will convert into pepsin, chymotrypsinogen into chymotrypsin, or procarboxypeptidase into carboxypeptidase 
or carboxylase B. So here we will see how the enzymatic reaction is taking place. This is the initial state of a reactant. This line or this y axis indicates free energy. Free energy is the energy which is available to do work. So this is the position of the energy of a reactant at which that reactant is stable. The reactant will convert into the product only when reactant of that substrate gains some energy and that energy which is required to carry out this reaction that energy is called as activation energy. Activation energy can be calculated as the energy of a transition state of a substrate minus the energy of a ground state of that substrate. The transition state means when the reactants come in the vicinity or in the proximation of each other that state is called as transition state. So the activation energy is the energy which is required to carry out the substrates or reactants in proximation of each other or in the vicinity of each other. So what happens in the enzymatic reaction? The enzyme reduces the activation energy of a reaction. So in enzymatic reaction, the activation energy required to carry out the reaction is reduced. So, so this is the activation energy which is required in the absence of enzyme and this is the energy which is required in the enzyme catalyzed reaction. So a reaction carried out in the absence of enzyme or in the presence of enzyme does not change the final state of the product. The final energy of the product in enzyme catalyzed reactions as well as in the absence of enzyme remains same. So in definition we have used term equilibrium. So this is called as equilibrium. The equilibrium does not change. The energy of product does not change whether it is carried out in the presence of enzyme or in the absence of enzyme. There are some substances which increase or decrease the rate of enzymatic reaction. If these substances decrease the rate of enzymatic reaction then they are called as inhibitors of that enzymatic reaction. And if these substances increase the rate of reaction then they are called as activators. So the inhibitors may bound to the enzyme so tightly that it will be difficult to remove these inhibitors from that enzyme. At that time that inhibitors are called as irreversible inhibitors. There are some inhibitors which loosely binds with the enzymes and such inhibitors are called as reversible inhibitors. In some metabolic reaction, the inhibitor is a final product of that reaction. If that final product binds to a particular intermediate enzyme, then that product or that inhibitor reduces the rate of reaction, decreases the rate of reaction. In such reactions, that product or that inhibitor is called as feedback inhibitor. There are some other terms in the enzymes which are also very important. First, the turnover number. So the turnover number is nothing but micromole of substrate converted into product in per mole of enzyme. The second term is enzyme units. Enzyme units are nothing but the micromole of substrate converts into product per minute per ml of enzyme. So enzyme units usually indicated by capital U. Enzyme units is nothing but micromole of substrate converted into product in a single minute by 1 ml of enzyme. Then the next term is immobilized enzyme. The enzymes are now used in every field. Most of the enzymes are obtained in the pure form and the cost which is required to purify them is very high. So once we have purify an enzyme and if we are adding that enzyme in a particular reaction then it is difficult to remove that enzyme from that product. So what scientists do? They immobilize enzyme. They bind this enzyme to a particular matrix. They cross-link this enzyme 
to a particular substance or they pack the enzyme in a particular matrix as such pack enzyme is called as immobilized enzyme we have already seen that enzymes are nothing but proteins but there are some enzymes which are not protein in nature about 99 percent enzymes are protein but some enzymes are not protein in nature they may be RNA or they may be artificially synthesized from other compound if they are synthesized from other compound they are called as synzyme or synthetic enzyme or artificial enzyme whereas the ribozymes are the enzymes which are RNA in nature no doubt to carry out a reaction these ribozymes also require protein but the protein does not involve in the reaction protein gives only structural support the actual catalytic function in such ribosomes are carried out by the RNA portion ribonucleic acid portion some of the enzymes which are used in the splicing RNA splicing are ribosomes like hammerhead enzyme these are nothing but examples of ribosomes sometimes antibodies are also acts as enzymes and such antibodies are called as obzyme these antibodies also increase the rate of reaction nearly thousand fold like that of the enzymes for example if the hydrolysis of ether is carried out in the presence of antibodies then the rate of hydrolysis will increase thousand fold thousand times than in the absence of antibodies so the enzymes whether they may be a normal enzyme, a whole enzyme, a immobilized enzyme, synzyme, upzyme, or ribozyme, they are very specific to their reactant and they produce very specific product. So the most characteristic feature of the enzyme is their specificity. A particular enzyme only converts a particular substrate into a particular product. There are some enzymes which shows group specificity means they converts a, a particular functional group into a particular product. So such specificity is called as group specificity. But there are some enzymes which are very specific to the reactant. For example, if the reactant is in the L form or liberatory form and if some reactant converts it into product then same enzyme can't convert D form of reactant into same product so they are very specific such type of specificity is often called as stereospecificity so no doubt enzymes are very specific in their nature so friends even if, if you don't understand much about the enzymes in this video, don't afraid. We will study each of this term in detail in other videos. So, goodbye.